Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. Today we're going to have some fun. You see, I dug deep back into the vault and came out with this old Winchester 1894. Just a basket case. But it's really kind of a cool old gun. You know, it's, a, it's an early model, about 1903 manufacture. Um, 2535, which is just a great caliber, my favorite 94 caliber. Octagon barrel. But at some point in its life, it met Bubba the gunsmith. And you can see right off the bat, we've got uh, some kind of brazing. It's sort of brazed um, on the finger lever. Um, obviously, at some point it was broke. And of course, back in the day, brazing was the, the best option. Um, but this one was kind of a hack job. You can see the magazine tube's been shortened. And, and that's not all the problems with the magazine tube. You can, if you look closely, it just kind of runs like a snake down along the the bottom of the barrel down there it's got about three bends in it from the end of the fore end to the end of the tube which is um, must have been cut off with a hacksaw because it's at about a 20 degree angle they took the the cap and just shoved it down in there and opened up the seam on it and I can see the the magazine spring is just balled up down in the end um, so it's it's seen better days now you probably notice too that uh, it has a real high-tech um, magazine tube holder here this is really just a piece of rusty baling wire because the it looks like that the uh, the uh, dovetail for the tube hanger is wallered out enough it doesn't hold it anymore so anyway this is a gun that I just couldn't stand it we need to get out and shoot it and of course it could be fired now you'd have to single load it because the magazine tube springs balled up down there in the end but it really deserves better than what it looks like right now so we're going to make it a little presentable um, kind of fix up the problems with it and then uh, when we get it to where we like it we're going to bring it back out here get it sighted in and, and do a little shooting with it okay so changing the the finger lever on a model 1894 is really a pretty simple process first off we're going to remove this this uh, screw here that covers the the pin between the finger lever and the um, bolt will turn it over now most pins drive out on on Winchesters and, and most manufacturers from left to right from from left as you're looking down the barrel to right in in this instance though it's pretty obvious because we we take that screw out there's a much bigger hole on this side than there is on the other side that we're going to drive that pin out from right to left okay it's one of the few exceptions to that rule the sights are the same way that we want them to go from left to right I know that may get a little confusing but um, because they do have this one exception so we're going to take a, a punch here and line it up and punch it out okay so now we've we've divorced the the lever from the bolt and now we'll, all we have to do is we've got a, a screw that links this this link here to the lever and we're going to need a little bigger screwdriver for that Now on these 94s, it's way simpler than some of the other models. Uh, 1895 in, in particular is a, a whole different ball of wax to try to change a lever out. And that, that's pretty easy. Come come right out. Let's let's get a little oil on that before we put it back in there. It's pretty dry. Um, here we go. We'll just put a little dab on there and and. Uh, rub it around with a finger they've got some wherever you see kind of bright shiny metal is where the the uh, metals rubbing against the other metal and it, it just needs a little bit of oil and it doesn't hurt to have a little rust preventative as well you don't have to go overboard you know you put a lot of times when you're talking about farm equipment and whatnot um, you almost can't get too much lubrication on on guns it's a little different story uh, you know you you don't need to just go overboard 
with lubrication on them, you're going to get oil in there. And sometimes if they're going to store for a long time, um, then that oil can, can set up sometimes and just get gummy. And of course it tracks, in this country, everything's so dusty, it attracts some of that dust and uh, causes just kind of a glob of stuff in there. Not, not to mean that you shouldn't oil because you darn sure should, but just don't don't need to go overboard. Okay, so that part's back in there. And see if we can't get everything lined up here. And the pin back in. Usually one or both ends has a little bit of a chamfer taper on it. Makes it a little easier to go back in there. And we've got to get up here and see where I can see. Oh, yeah, it looks like feels like it's going to go. No, it doesn't, doesn't want to after all. Sometimes you take a, take a light and see how things are lined up in there. Just a little bit off. Here we go. Now she should go. There. And we'll drive it back home. All the way down. And put the screw back in and just that quickly we've we've got a new finger lever in all right so this one we're going to set aside and maybe one of these days we'll show you how to get all that uh, brazing off of it and welded it back up properly with a TIG welder. That might be kind of interesting for some of you folks to see how that kind of process is done. So stick around, we'll uh, dive right into getting this magazine disaster um, taken care of. Okay, so let's see about this magazine tube. Now first thing we need is, is a very high-tech gunsmithing tool to cut off this high-tech magazine hanger known as baling wire <laughs> so we'll get this baling wire off of here and and just see how this goes now I can see right now it's just flopping easy in there sometimes these these magazine tubes can be a real bear to get get out because they've been on for so long and it, you can't get the tube to slide up and down the hanger and and this one because of the way that uh, that cap has been forced in there and split open the seam um, it's just jammed in there tight but this this uh, hanger being so loose from the barrel we can just slide this one out so <laughs> that's about as easy a removal of a magazine tube off a of Winchester as I've ever ever done and so usually there's a little pin that that goes in here and and in the base of this hanger there's a hole and there's a notch in the tube that it goes through and that keeps the the tube from running up and down of course this one's just been shoved in there so it doesn't have that um, and I'm gonna have a devil of a time getting that hanger off of there it looks like to me but um, so now we have to have to decide if if it was the hanger itself which looks like it's kind of rounded off or if we've got a problem with this dovetail and these dovetails they're they're just put in with a with a 60 degree three quarter inch dovetail cutter like this if we, if we have to clean up this dovetail we'll put this in in the milling machine level everything up and then we we get it right in here like this and then we we move one way and then the other and that's what cuts those those dovetails now these dovetails are not straight the, they have to go in, and here's here's another magazine tube hanger that I brought just in case I needed it if this one was bad, and I think it is. So we, we put that that tube in, and then we have to turn these because they're they're round on on the ends. So we we go in with the with the tube like this, and then turn it into place. Now that one was the one that was in there was really loose. This one's really tight. Oh, I see why. Somebody tried. It was it was Bubba again. He uh, 
put some silver solder, it looks like, down in there to try to close it up a little bit and get it to match before he gave up and put the baling wire on. So we're going to have to clean that, that uh, solder out of there. And what I think I'll do is uh, just try to, try to clean it out as much as necessary to get this in. And if that doesn't work and it needs to all come out, then the nice thing is with, with solder, it has a very low melting point. We want to keep heat off of the barrel, but it melts at a low enough heating point. We can always just take a, a propane torch and melt that out of that dovetail if, if we need to. But I'm just going to try with some uh, little files first and see if I can't get that cleaned up enough to, to make that work. If not, we'll, we'll melt it out of there. So I'll be right back here after I do a little bit of hand filing work. Okay, so what I did here is I really got to thinking and we had just the right angles with this dovetail cutter here. So just put it in there and, and used it to scrape out that, uh, that soft solder and it, it came out real nice and easy. And then just a little finishing touch with a, with a needle file with a rounded edge, a rounded tip to dig some of the stuff out of this other side. And now we've got a really a nice tight fit and I'm really relieved because if this is if this is wallered out in here then we'd have had to use the dovetail cutter clean it up good and then we would have had to build up the edges of this hanger and and then um, machine those down so that they would have fit properly and that's that's a big job or a very delicate job now we're see if we get this to go in there we go just like that so that's the way it should go. I'm going to take uh, a couple minutes here just to clean things up a little bit. You can see when they heated this barrel up and, and uh, put that solder on, there's, there's, there's some rust and whatnot. So we'll just take some, just some uh, standard run-of-the-mill gun oil, put on it, and some real fine steel wool, 4 aught steel wool. Um, normally I use uh, brass wool, but I don't have any with me right now. But this steel wool, if you got a light touch, you can clean things up really good and it won't affect the, the finish. Um, obviously, we don't want to go with any kind of a heavier steel wool. But we'll spend a few minutes, get this all cleaned up, and then we'll come back and uh, see if we can't get things put together. Okay, so now we can take this. I've got a uh, replacement tube here that's full length that, that ought to be right for the job. We'll put this hanger on. Remember I talked about the, the notch. There's a notch here that, that we have to drive a pin in. Um, so we're going to get it fairly close. But we've, we're going to have to get this down quite a ways. Let me just take this out of the holder here. And then we'll set it here this way. Now remember I talked about having to turn these we've got to do a quarter turn to get these set in and hopefully we're still picking that up on camera there it goes bring it back in here hopefully it all goes back together as easy as it came apart and we know that notch needs to be on the bottom see yep yeah, it's absolutely lined up so now we've got to get our little pin it's a very small little pin so we don't want to drop it and kick it across the floor or we may never find it again and of course let's go from the other direction there she goes Okay, so now we just got to put in our spring and follower. And we've got an end cap over here. See which way it goes. That way. Actually, the right end cap, we don't have to shove it on through. And let's see if we got the right size screwdriver. It looks like it. Okay. 
Boy, there we are back together. Look at that from basket case to fully functional. Let's go do some shooting. Okay, so here we are ready for the moment of truth. We've got this uh, this old $15 Winchester put back together. Took uh, a few more than $15 worth of parts to put it all together, but it wasn't bad. Um, so we're, we're going to see if this uh, this gun that really wasn't even fit for a wall hanger will shoot. Now the bore cleaned up exceptionally well, so I'm kind of hopeful that uh, she's going to be a good shooter. Let's give it a try. Today we're uh, shooting some ammunition from our friends at Minuteman Ammo over in uh, Sutherland, Oregon. They're not paying me to say that, by the way. They're just good people. Okay, so let's uh, put one in the chamber and see how she shoots. Well, that's impressive. We're, we're only at about 30 yards here because I didn't have any idea if it would even be on paper. But first shot's just uh, kind of low and, and to the right and in the bullseye. So let's, uh, let's back this thing up a little bit. And, and just see uh, how she does from a little further. We'll get back about, uh, I think we got room enough to back up about 80 yards here or so. Okay, here we are backed up a little bit further. We'll see, uh, see how she does. Now, I'm assuming that we'll be a little bit further to the right and maybe a little bit lower, but let's, uh, let's shoot and find out. Now, I apologize. You might hear some some road noise in the background. Usually we get up on the ranch far enough away from any roads, but uh, today it's warmed up so much it's just muddy out. And we can't really get too far away from the, the low country and by the highway. Okay, so we'll take our first shot here. Okay, now I blew it. I uh, forgot my binoculars over at the truck. Let me go get those real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, looks like we're just slightly to the right, so we're pretty good windage, but we're a little bit low yet. Um, before I make any adjustments, let's just take a couple more shots and just see how consistent she's going to be. Boy, I couldn't be happier. This is something else for a gun that was just kind of thrown back in, the, in an old trunk somewhere and forgot about all these years. To get out here and shoot this well, that's just tremendous. Take, take one more shot and uh, then we'll, we'll play around with the sights a little bit. Just raise them up a little bit and then we ought to be good. Well, let's see where that one hit. Well, it looks like we just kind of got a vertical string there. You know, that, that first one when we were up close was, was right in the bullseye, but just a, a hair right and low, and these others have just made kind of a, a string of um, below it, so we're going to have to raise up this rear sight. This, uh, this is a, kind of an interesting one. It's one of the first ones I've ever picked up with a rear sight and a peep sight that line up just about perfectly. But, so we'll raise up this peep sight and it'll clear that rear sight a little bit and my old eyes take the, the peep sight a little better anyway. But this has been kind of kind of fun. This is an old old 94 that's just been kind of forgotten about, pushed aside, um, just kind of an old parts gun and wasn't really even a, a very good wall hanger the way that mag tube looked and everything. So we put a few parts in it and our $15 Winchester has turned out to be a pretty good shooting old 2535. You know, it really wasn't a, a whole lot of... Uh, complicated gunsmithing in this one mostly just changing out some parts but uh, I hope you learned something and kind of enjoyed it there is one other thing that I, I kind of wanted to mention though I, I talked about you know what to do if that that uh, dovetail for that magazine tube hanger is wallered out and if it's really badly wallered out then we have to do some machine work but if it's just a little bit loose um, you can take that that front front edge of that 
and just real carefully peen it down so that you know you've got we've got surfaces like this touching each other and if it's just a little bit loose then we can peen that top edge down now it's better if the if the surfaces are touching the full length but if we peen that down then the top of it's kind of holding it down and it's not a not a great fix but it, it'll get you by um, but otherwise um, kind of ha had a good time out here and, and uh, Got another gun that I'm pretty happy to go out and shoot. I'm going to shoot this old girl a little, little bit more and think about uh, what kind of hunting trip we can plan around this one. So thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar. How's that for a straight line vertical string? Looks like I just need to get kind of straightened out on my elevation and uh, we got us a heck of a shooter here. <laughs>